Hey gang, or should I say, hey friends, welcome back to Joe Daddy's Workshop. As many of you know, I have two channels. I have Joe Daddy's Garage, which is a channel that I focus on classic cars, restoration, repair videos for automotive stuff, things of that nature. This channel, I do a variety of different things. I may be doing a repair on a go-kart. I may be rebuilding uh, something that was welded. I may be introducing you to our RV. <laughs> Now on my other channel uh, and at, on my live streams on various other formats, I have mentioned that we are going to start doing some RV stuff. The intent is that I can take this RV with my wife and our pets and a small car and we can travel to a certain location and the idea being that we can set up the RV and then I can take that car and I can drive to somebody's house and help them work with or on their cars. Uh, I have a lot of followers who work on Mustangs and Camaros and a variety of different things on my other channel and they're frequently asking for help and I've had this idea for many years that I want to be able to do a kind of a mobile uh, video series. So to that end that's why we bought the RV. That way my wife and I can still enjoy some time together, do some sightseeing and I can still interact with my fans let's say on my other channel and in the meantime I can make videos on RVing and I can make videos on automotive stuff. So this is our 2014 uh, Itasca Impulse 26 QP. Now it's the same as a uh, there's a uh, Winnebago it is who makes it. So Winnebago had made their other version of this and they wanted to sell more units. I guess they were limited by the name or something. So they created the Itasca brand and they sold more of these units. Now the reason we bought this particular camper is one, it's less than, it's 28 feet, which is kind of our limit because we knew we were gonna to be towing something behind it. We didn't wanna go with an extended vehicle. Also, the shorter versions, the bed in the back, and I can show you this, the bed in the back is set in the corner and that is one feature my wife didn't like. She wanted to have the bed in the middle of the uh, RV, let's say, so you could walk around it. She didn't want to have to climb on the bed to make the bed and that sort of thing. Another cool feature is this has a big storage area in the back, and I'm gonna show you all these things. Another advantage is it is the F450 chassis. So it has the V10 engine, the big transmission, and we can tow with it without any problems. We haven't taken anything other than a trip, a short ride around with it. I did do a video on my other channel uh, where we had bought this in Florida and then we drove it back 400 miles to where we are here in Georgia. So at this point we are accumulating pieces and parts. All that stuff that you have to have in order for you to go out and enjoy your RV, right? So we're already getting things together in, effort, uh, in an effort to start making these trips. So let me show you the RV itself, and then uh, I'll show you some of the accessories we bought. So as I said, it is an Itasca Impulse, and it has uh, a variety of storage areas on the sides here. These are just two standard compartments. They're not huge, but they're just kind of uh, uh, individual areas, let's say. You can open this up, and that's probably about 18 inches deep, and maybe... 32 inches wide. This one, same kind of thing. A little storage area. It are not connected. So they did separate that for some reason, but that's fine. It does have catches to hold the doors. It has your 110 outlet on the sides. It also has your cable TV hookup here if you were so inclined. This is the water heater outlet. This is the furnace. And that is the back of the refrigerator. Back here, this is a really cool feature that I like on this particular model. This is the battery tray. What I like about this is there's two batteries in here. You have this little handle right here. You can pull that out and this whole tray slides out so you can access the batteries if you need to change them. That is a really cool feature and I'm glad that it has it. 
here we have the uh, this is an inlet uh, for the water for your storage tank water and then this is the big trunk area so what I really like about this area here it has two cavities inside and it comes with a table so underneath that table is also a deep well and these have plugs in them so that you can put you can actually put ice and water in here and store drinks and then when you're done you can pull that plug and drain it otherwise previous owners have put in a little a couple little clips up there I think for holding like fishing rods spare tire mounted in the back here and then there is another door so you have access from the side and the rear and up here is a little light so that's handy could use uh, more of the more lights back here probably but that is where what we have at the moment like I said that is a good sized opening on the back of this uh, side of the RV and that window there is above or beside the bed so here we are in the back I've got a couple trees overhanging me right now but another feature that I did like it has a big back window and that is an emergency exit as well there's a release handle on the side if you have to get out get out also it has a backup camera and you can turn that camera on to look at your tow vehicle that you're towing behind you of course it has a ladder that goes overhead and this is that large door in the back now one thing we ran into problems with because we've only had this about a month or so i have it parked here it has rained and because of the angle i was getting a lot of water coming down the back side and it was working its way into this storage area and so for temporary purposes i just put a piece of foil tape across here and that defeated the water now it just runs off and over so not something you really want to do on a regular basis however if it keeps water out that's a good thing i should point out as well it has the receiver hitch in the back with the large pigtail next to it and you'll see here it has these skid bumpers let's say and that is to keep you from bottoming out the RV in the back and over there that's the exhaust for the generator so really good thinking on their part to put these here so that you can you'll hit the ground before your RV will bottom out so here we are on the driver's side as you can see we have a window up there on top of the overhead bunk area window on both sides uh, I'm going to talk more about that in a minute here we have the slide out with a large window that's the dinette area you don't have to slide that out there's a lot of room in there with that in as it is right now down below here two more storage areas as you, these do not have the hook to catch the doors because of the slide out feature they don't want you to have the door up in this case this little area here is just uh, a small storage area and this is your uh, power source now what's interesting about this vehicle is that plug-in right there that is your power that goes to a uh, exterior power source but if you're going to be using uh, the vehicle as a power source you have to have that plugged in or it will not work so that's one of the interesting features on this vehicle and here we have the propane tank so there's your access point for that for filling it and also here is the drain for the black water now what's interesting about this setup is you only have one drain and it is set up on the black water there is a secondary drain behind this one basically the intent is you drain the black water first and then your gray water dumps into the black water tank and then flushes it out so only one port there and that's how that operates now this vehicle also has airbags on it and I think for that reason, and what I've read about these, uh, it does not have leveling jacks. So the idea is if you, have a, you don't want to lift up, have those airbags stretched out, could be a problem. So they don't, this does not have leveling jacks on it at all. So what you have to use is the wedges. And it's not that hard to do. This, uh, this kit I bought, I bought three kits from Harbor Freight. That's one of the accessories I've already bought. So it comes with two wedges to a box. So there's a total of six that I have now that I can put 
two on this side, two on the other side, and one at the front of each uh, front wheel. So you just have to understand what happens whenever you put these on a wedge. You know, if your left rear is low, obviously you back up onto that. And people have done videos on these as well, but very handy to have and not that hard to use. Up here we have our outside shower, and then that door there, that is the access to the generator. Above that is the gas tank, and this generator runs off of the same gas as the vehicle. Another side window there in the bedroom area. That's pretty much it for the exterior. Again, this is a F4, or well, E, I should say. It's not F, it's F a E450 Super Duty. And uh, that was, again, one of the features that I liked about it, that it was a heavier chassis. So let me talk about this overhead bunk area for a minute. When I looked this up online, the dealership told me everything was fantastic, great shape. You know how it is. So I go down to Florida. I'm making a deal on this. I've got all the paperwork filed and I'm doing an inspection and I find there's water damage. I know it's not uncommon to find water damage in these areas. Um, you know, it is a difficult thing to design and build so it's watertight. But the dealership basically lied to me. And so when I went down there and I started looking things over, I found the damage and of course they acted surprised. Um, the only thing is with that, I was able to talk them into taking some more money off of the vehicle. So there may be a future video where I fix that area. So let's step up into the RV. Oh, let me point this out too. This has a very low entry point. So there's no step that comes out. I like that feature as well. I'm gonna step up in. Let me see if I can turn on some lights. Now these are all LED lights in here and they are in, on individual switches. So when you do one, it turns on one side. Go to two, it turns on both sides. So all these are independent. They're not hooked to a main switch at all. And that's fine. It's just something you have to understand. Uh, the dinette here, as I said, this slides out. But you can see there is plenty of room between the kitchen area and the dinette space. Overhead here we have two storage compartments. And in this, we couldn't figure out what was going on. They look like speaker boxes, and we weren't really sure because we've got a sound system here that is connected, but we also have those speakers overhead. There's one there, there's one here. I think there may be one back here somewhere as well. I'm not 100% sure, but we have secondary speakers. Well, as it turns out, those speakers are connected to the vehicle stereo. And these other speakers are connected to the sound system that is also connected to the TV. So that's fine, just something we had to learn. Now, I'm not gonna pull all this out of the way at the moment, but you can see here, this is a material that is not what you would normally see in here. This is like hardboard or hardy board kind of stuff that uh, you would see on, on bathrooms or something. And they layered this. There's a couple pieces of that up there you can even see there's there's some water evidence of water damage. And up in the front, they also kind of hid things. They had put some, sorry about that, I got this fan on. They had uh, covered up everything that was damaged. And so, like I said, I found it, and I may have to do a repair video later. This item here, this is your, your TV antenna and DVD. This is still hooked into the system. Modern uh, RVs don't even have this kind of setup anymore. It's not really needed with the way they're made. Over here we have the slide out control for uh, the dinette area. Um, and I think there's a feature on that where the door, I mean the uh, parking brake, I believe it has to be set for that to open up. Again, TV that pivots around. Really nice counter and, and storage space underneath here. All of this cabinetry is well made. Um, can't complain about any of it. Nice deep slide out drawers. Stainless steel sink. Nice uh, water neck faucet there. Nice little window. Right line with the sink. Again, we've got another LED deal right there. Uh, some of this stuff was already in here when we got it. This little 
paper towel holder. There's some hooks in a variety of places. The another feature we liked is the fact that it has a microwave slash convection oven. So we were looking for a vehicle that had that. We weren't looking for a regular oven, but this one had it, so we're not going to take it out. It's just going to stay that way. Here we have a couple of storage, uh, pantry storage, nice deep drawers, full slide outs. Like that a lot. Standard refrigerator runs off of um, gas or the generator. So good to go there. Uh, I'll show you. Let's see the bathroom here. And what's interesting, I don't. I'm not sure why they do this. Let me just step back a second. This side of the bathroom, this actually tapers that direction, so it makes this area much wider. And I guess that's just a feature just for a visual appearance. But you do have a full stand-up shower in here. A couple of storage areas. And then the previous owners have added uh, this little storage bin. And there's one up here overhead. So not a bad thing. Pretty nice setup. Um, standard issue camper toilet. And a nice little stainless steel sink. This reminds me of something you'd find on maybe an aircraft. There's a little storage area underneath that as well. Back here, I really like the way this is set up. Um, unfortunately, you don't have any storage under the bed itself because of that big trunk area that's underneath that I was talking about earlier. You do have a couple drawers, cabinets overhead, and then that one is big enough that you can hang clothes in it. It has a nice little TV here and a corner cabinet. And this side is just has a couple of hooks on it. Um, there is, you know, vents back here. And also it has alarms in it for, I think, CO2. Uh, I think even a propane sensor. And, um, you know, smoke detectors. So I think there's two or three of those. Yeah, there's that one there. And then there's another one up here. So uh, that's that's the bulk of this. So you know this is this is what we were looking for, and it's gonna I feel like suit our needs. Um, let me go over some of. Oh, let me see. Show one more feature here. This is a cool thing too. Even though we probably never do it, but these tables on a lot of campers have a leg in the middle that you have to take that leg out and store it somewhere. And lower this down this actually has a sliding mechanism so that it's on a track on the sidewall you pull that release and that will lower down and then the cushions of course make a rudimentary bed uh, some other features that has blinds there's uh, two sets of blinds on the windows on the big windows there is a, a daytime shade which is a charcoal color uh, see-through kind of thing and then there is the night or the um, the regular shade. Let's see if I can get a hold of one of these. Oh, there it is. So there's that other shade right there. You can just see, and you can pull down that one independently of the other one to block out the sunlight. So I think that's it. A lot of a lot of nice features on this. There's several plugins in a variety of places, kind of all over. And of course we have. The driver's area and I'll just say this is like a typical van the E450 um, we bought this it actually has 12,000 miles on it so that's why the seats look so good that's why the interior looks so good very low miles and the only thing I can find wrong again is this area up here with the uh, previous water damage I did buy a 360 degree dash cam and that is already mounted up there. Uh, we did use that on our previous road trip when we drove it home from Florida and it worked really well. So um, that's about it for things going on inside. Did I mention it's hot? <laughs> it's like 95 degrees out here and I'm trying to make this video. Um, let me show you some of these accessories that we bought. We did buy a drain hose that is a, a, an upgrade from what we have. We also bought the uh, stackable bridge system for that drain hose. If you're setting up somewhere where they have a, um, 
a facility uh, at your or a drainage facility at your campsite, you kind of want something like this so that you can set it up as a tapered bridge for that to function better. Also, we have bought some water filters, a pressure regulator. Uh, we understand that there can be problems with overpressurizing the system in the RV, so we're being proactive with that. We also have RV Marine 25 foot drinking water hose, a sewer hose rinse kit, because you never know, you might need that. Um, there is, I don't know what these are, to be honest. It's a filter for something. And I don't know if I ordered it or my wife ordered it, but I'm going to show it to you anyway. But it is, it is some sort of a cup type filter. I don't know what that's for, but we have it. And the latest thing I purchased was these wheel covers. There's a variety of designs out there as far as what material they're made from. Uh, this was a reasonably priced kit. So I did stretch one over the front wheel and it seems to work like it's supposed to. What's the durability on it? I don't know. Uh, you'll notice down here there are some grommets in the, in the back on the uh, flaps and the idea being you can take one of these little bungees, crawl underneath there, hook it around your tire so that the wind doesn't blow it off. So I still haven't put the other ones on yet, but I am working on that. And I'm sure there's other stuff that we're going to be getting. My wife is looking at a uh, surge protector, so we may be getting one of those before too long. And I'm sure there's other things that we'll need to get along the way for the inside of the vehicle, you know, plates and coffee maker and all that fun stuff so whew, it's hot I had to switch out to one of, one of these I don't know what you call them the boonie cap hats or something uh, you know with the flaps come down because the sun was just beating me up but uh, that'll be it for this particular video I just wanted to, I know I probably talked about it a lot but I wanted to share what the features were on this RV and what we had in mind as far as buying accessories and those sort of things Hopefully we can make a road trip soon and do some more videos on that process. Uh, again, I'm going to post some videos about the RV experience on this channel. And on my other channel will be the excursions that I do once we get set up. So a little, kind of a combination of things. But uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like any of the products that I have shown in, in this video, I'll post some links down below in the description. If you're interested, if you're not, that's fine too, but just letting you know that they're out there. Um, until next time, take care of yourselves. See ya.